So tobacco smuggling is actually a big problem. I heard of recently there were containers, I mean huge, many huge 40-foot containers of legitimately produced cigarettes were taken by a militant group in the, in, uh, in the Sahel uh, just a couple of weeks ago. And so there's a little concern of, wait, has that all become weapons now? Because they literally trade them for weapons. And then tobacco in particular is used almost as a currency, tobacco and drugs more than anything else. And uh, so these are just examples of a particular Belarusian gang that uh, smuggling from Belarus into Western Europe. And there's, there's huge overproduction in Belarus. So what I was, have been looking into is not just the downstream gray economy, but the upstream. When you have this quantity of illicit production, somebody's feeding it. Somebody's providing the raw materials to it. And in the, in the case of uh, tobacco, these are often uh, they're counterfeit, so they're not made by their big tobacco companies or something else called illicit whites. But they're still getting the filters and they're getting the cigarette paper. And there are only a few companies in the world that make them. And they're huge. All right? So that's been my latest pet project, is looking into that. So here it is. Uh, so, what the, for instance, the guys who make the filters, right, uh, it's uh, something called cellula cellulose acetate toe. It's highly concentrated, and I've been tracking uh, how, how it moves that Eastman and Salonese, for instance, are basically over, overselling 10% of their sales, at least 10% of their sales, are obviously going to criminal networks, and they know it. They have to know it. Uh, because Eastman is selling just to Belarus, you can, you can track trade data. You can, it takes a bit of effort, but you can find the data. Um, has, been go, has been selling 10 times, or 9.17 times, the legal quota <coughs> in Belarus. Uh, and that's all, they're all really nasty gangs. And then a lot of these cigarettes then have go head west into, they either go into Russia, and feed that honest, uh, that honest non-criminal uh, organizations there, right? And then, or they head west into the U.S., uh, the U.K. and Ireland, where the price for cigarettes is the highest. So you go from where it's low to where it's high. And uh, there's been a lot of seizures in the hands of the real IRA that's rearming, and that's going on now in the last few months. Uh, through tobacco, and what upsets me is that these are American companies feeding these groups. So, if you want to dismantle illicit trafficking, don't just look downstream, also look at the culprits upstream. Because as I was talking about before, it's all about looking at the networks and identifying the strategic nodes. Stopping an occasional container of, uh, of uh, drugs or pharmaceuticals or tobacco or counterfeit bags ain't going to do the trick. You have to dismantle the networks, and to do that, you have to find their vulnerabilities. And those are the nodes like the suppliers and the shippers and all of that.